I'm Alex Brickoff, and I'll be hosting tonight's virtual edition of the Eastside Get Together Clinic for March 2021. Our clinic tonight is going to be sponsored by the Fourth Division of the Pacific Northwest Region of the National Model Girls Association. Let me introduce tonight's uh, clinician. Uh, that would be Burr Stewart. Burr is going to uh, give the clinic tonight uh, titled How to Shoot and Edit a Model Railroad Video. Burr is going to be giving this clinic based on his recent work of editing our 4D PNR videos and a series of videos on his own layout. He plans to give us a tour of the equipment he uses, planning for the shots, simultaneous shooting, and some of the steps involved in editing and publishing the videos to YouTube. Burr, if you're all set, I'll turn it over to you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Burr Stewart, and I am a um, local model railroader in the Seattle area. I modeled the early 70s in the Burlington Northern, and I'm going to show you tonight uh, how I prepare videos, which are a lot of fun to watch. My premise for tonight is it's easy to take videos of your layout or your modeling. If you don't have a layout, you probably have models or you wouldn't be here. It's easy to make them into movies or layout tours, but it isn't necessary because once you've taken a video, you can upload that to YouTube. And of course, that's the third point. It's easy to publish them to YouTube for all the world to enjoy. We're gonna basically uh, focus on those three things tonight. First, what is a movie? A movie is a combination of video clips and perhaps still photos with or without audio recordings that are linked to it that tell some kind of a story. A layout tour is the story, of course, of why, where, what, and when that your layout has become. And a layout tour can be an in-person visit to someone, a scrapbook that you have in your living room or your train room. It can be a pre-recorded video, and it can be a live Zoom presentation, such as many of the ones that we've all enjoyed on the 4D PNR Zoom meetings. So that what makes a good layout tour, it could be a subject of an entire presentation, but I'm just going to, it's the age old formula that model railroader and railroad model craftsman and many of the other publications we all enjoy use. There's lots of opportunity to cover the big picture about how your layout came about. This is what it makes a good layout tour. It's kind of that simple. Now, what makes a good movie? is anything with a plot and great characters. It's much more broad than a layout tour. A good movie is just needs action, it needs trains, and some kind of drama. And it can be anything you want. Now this particular picture is a narrow gauge hopper car that fell off a cliff on my layout when I was in the middle of filming something else. And it dumped ore all over the main line. It was pretty dramatic when it happened. It got captured on video. And to my amazement, Later, I was able to make another video of the story of how I cleaned it up, in which case I brought the vacuum cleaner on the layout, I sucked all that stuff up into a stocking, and then I uh, recycled all the ore back into my ore container. And this is just one example of drama, even though it's obviously a little silly, but the point is, and I don't remember the final numbers, but there have been at least 600 people have watched this what I consider to be relatively stupid video about how I cleaned up a spill, you know, so it's worth thinking about publishing your stories, your drama, even if it's if you think it's only interesting to you. So the big picture is that if you have something worth sharing and some kind of camera setup and, and just a cell phone will do just fine, as I'm about to demonstrate, uh, some kind of computer file is usually the result of taking pictures. And you can share that computer file directly by email with your people. As long as your people that you want to see it have a program on their computer that can read that file, they have to have some way to look at it, a viewer, and they're storing that file on their computer. So they have to have a decent amount of memory on whatever that device is to accept your file. So if you upload that same file to YouTube, then all people with browsers can use it. And the key point here is 
you don't need any memory on your computer. You just need to be able to run a browser like Chrome or Firefox or any of these regular browsers because YouTube is storing your file and is serving as a web-based viewer. And this is a huge advantage to all your people. Once you've uploaded to YouTube, you can send a link to your people and say, watch my video on YouTube. And then they don't have to store the file on their computer. They don't have to have the compatible viewer that works with your file. It's all done by YouTube. You notice I haven't said anything about editing up until now, and that's because editing your file is totally optional. And I've uh, spent, uh, I was gonna say wasted my entire COVID uh, opportunity on editing people's videos. And it, it, you just don't have to do it, but you can take one file that you take from your camera and combine it with other files and make pretty cool movies. And that's of course why uh, video editing is worth doing. But what I wanna make sure you're clear about is if you take a cool video of a train going somewhere on your layout, you can go ahead and upload it to YouTube. You don't have to worry about all this nonsense that video editing that I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit later in tonight's clinic. So what we're gonna talk about, since all of each one of these boxes could be a whole evening, I'm just trying to do an, a, an overview tonight uh, I'm just going to go downstairs and show you a, a typical camera setup, and we're going to take some movie. Then I'm going to show you how we could play with those movies in, you know, in a video editor. And then finally, I'll show you how easy it is to upload it to YouTube. And with any luck, we have time to do those three things. And I'm going to try to do all of them as demonstrations, so you don't have to see many more of these pictures. On the left is a picture of the setup we're about to play with, and I just want to point out that I have a cell phone on a sidearm boom over here, right over the over the yard, and I don't know how prototypical that would be, but maybe if we were on a bridge uh, over the yard, looking this way. Then I have another phone, uh, cell phone here that we're going to take video of these engines separating from the train. Tonight is all going to be about yarding. Uh, a westbound freight. If any of you saw my most recent operations video, it was a train coming in with the new scale trains SD45s from Sky Comish down to Interbay. So here's the train having parked in Interbay. We're going to remove the engines and send them off towards the engine facility. And this is the camera that's going to be the close in camera following the action of the engines. And then on the right here, I have an action cam, which you usually call a GoPro type cam, but this one is actually made by a company called Acaso. It's designed for uh, scuba diving and uh, bungee jumping and all that kind of stuff, but it works great for taking train pictures too. And I've just plopped it on a gondola here and you can see the view is kind of cool looking down the side of the locomotives. So we'll turn that on too and take a little tape with that, which we can then incorporate in our video. So these are the steps of recording the video. This can be called the workflow if you want, because the, the order is fairly important. You have to first start on what, why you're doing this, what's the goal, get the cameras positioned, the lights positioned, the layout turned on and set up. You have to clap loudly in order to sync multiple cameras if you're using multiple cameras, which is also optional. And then the hardest part is number six, you have to operate the throttle and the uncoupling pick while aiming the cameras uh, during the motion, if applicable. So you need to be an octopus for this. And of course, the other alternative is to have someone helping you, which isn't too good an alternative during COVID, but it is helpful. It's much easier to add your voice to the video after you take the shoot than it is to get rid of your voice if you want to change it. So one thing I learned the hard way is to be very quiet when I'm taking video so that the only recording is the sound of the locomotives and not the sound of me thinking that I'm saying something clever. Because when I get to editing, it's just inevitable that I want to say it differently and better. It's also true that when you make mistakes, you have to decide, do I start all over again or can I barge through that mistake? So with that, we're going to go downstairs and take a look. Yep, All right, we do. I'll see you guys later. We're going downstairs. So I'm going to go 
turn this sideways. Hopefully that'll work. Are you seeing are you seeing Skyway luggage in the old spaghetti factory? Yep. Yep, we are. Great. Okay, great. Now here's a dark train room. She's gonna to come to life shortly. And here's the scene. Um, we're going to, here, sorry if I'm making you dizzy. We got the layout turned on. We need the lights turned on. Now those are the track lights that normally light up the layout. They look like this. And this is an LED uh, light that I picked up for about 80 bucks. And when I turn it on, it makes a big bunch of light. I'll see, you can see that there sort of. So what I'm gonna do now, are you hearing me fine? Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna set this on our little, uh, on our little bridge. So that's going to be your view from there. I hope you all enjoy this view now that you have yeah. of the action. Now you can see the camera over here. I'm going to turn that guy on and I'm going to turn the camera on video and start recording. Okay, so this little guy is a cell phone on a tripod. So you see how I can rotate that? So I'm going to follow this engine or I'm going to try to while we're taking the shot. Now the next thing we want to do is set up the GoPro camera. I showed you this before. We have to turn it on. And then we have to start it recording. Turn it upside down and put it on the gondola car right next to the engine. Maybe I'll pull it back a little bit from the engine. That's going to go black in a second, but it, it, at least you get the idea. So now we're going to start up the engines. We got our, our three cameras going. It's really just two. And now the all important clap. This is going to synchronize the, this moving camera from this moving camera. So they'll be synchronized in time. We're going to go like that. And that'll make a nice spike in the audio, which will allow us to edit it later. Here we go. Oh, we need a rotating beacon, perhaps. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. The whole point of this was to separate the engine from the train. So, of course, that means we have to back up, give a little coupler slack. There we go. Now we need to uncouple. One of the nice things about editing is if you want, you can take out this silly footage of you uncoupling, but uh, I kind of enjoy keeping it in there, but often I will edit it just so it doesn't take so long. Because as you know, uncoupling picks sometimes work well and sometimes don't. All right, let's try that again. Little bell maybe. That was Broad Street. Now I forgot to turn this. So we'll just pretend we're following the rear engine instead of the front engine. The hardest part of this is remembering to do everything. Now we flip the switches. Can you hear the horn when I blow it? No. No. It's too far away from the other camera. Uh, I'll show you the, the resulting recordings in a second. Here, here's the Here's the horn. Can you hear that now? All right, well, you notice I completely forgot to pan the shot with this camera because I was trying to do too many things at once. <laughs> but I did a rehearsal where I did it, so I still have tape of it, which we'll play with now. So now I'm gonna stop the recording. 
I'm just going to entertain you for a second. Since we got this far, I just thought I'd show you one more locomotive just for fun. What should happen now is that the switchers should come in and start working the train that we just removed the motive power from. So anyway, we'll call that good. All right, now that we're going to call that the shot. So we'll turn off the light and the layout. And we will go upstairs. It's hard for me not to show you other stuff down here, but, oh, I know I was gonna, I almost did the video of this scene right here so that we could rotate a turntable around, but that's all right. All right, now we're gonna go back and play with, now that we've shot something. Anybody have any questions about shooting video? Did that seem pretty easy? Beautiful display cases. All right. And this, th that was the camera setup that we just demonstrated. Now I'm gonna demonstrate video editing, which is kind of fun. The, the workflow in video editing is even more important because first you need to bring the video footage from all your cameras into the movie. The key thing about a video editor, this shows what is on the screen at the moment, uh, the engines there. And then down here is the video track and in the green you can see the audio clips that are connected to the video. In the blue, you can also see audio, which is the sound of the locomotive. So this, this green is me talking over the sound of the locomotives. And this little thing here is a transition between two clips. And so this is what a, a video editor really looks like. So the first step is to bring the video footage from your shoot into the computer and then get the clips in the right order or in parallel, which I'll demonstrate in a minute and then use the claps that we did to align the timing of those parallel videos. Cut out redundant periods you want, play around with the audio and transitions, and then only when you've done all that is it worth narrating, because what you don't want to do is start talking and then come in and have to cut a clip out. And then eventually you can add titles as needed and watch the whole thing until it's good enough. Before we upload to YouTube, I'm now going to demonstrate that using my iMovie, which is the video editor that I use. This is a cheap video editor that comes with the Mac. If you have a PC, there's a video editor called Video Editor, which comes with uh, Windows. It works very similar to what I'm going to show you, so uh, you should be able to do this if you're a PC user. Now, this is when you open iMovie, you see your library of videos. The one that we just did, I'm calling the Eastside Clinic per rehearsal. I'm going to open that, and this is going to show you three clips from the cameras that we were just playing with. They're very similar to what we just did in the basement live, but I did them this afternoon so that we could play around with a little bit of video editing technique. Uh, I'm just doing this to demonstrate how easy and fun and visual the whole thing is. This is the... Um, picture from the tripod where I was trying to move as the train went by. And you can see that I sort of succeeded in that. That's what this first clip is. The second clip is the GoPro camera on the gondola car. And it's upside down because I was wanting to lower the height of the, of the lens. So we need to flip that around. And then this is the view from the main camera that I was talking to you from, and you can see that the GoPro camera was visible. The first thing we're going to do is flip this clip. This is the GoPro camera. If I go up here to the symbol for crop, one of the options is to rotate the clip. So we'll just do that. We'll rotate it twice. 
and bang, there we have the view. We've rotated that entire video clip with all of its thousands of photographs all in one fell swoop. We've got that done. The next thing to figure out is do we want to superimpose one of these? You see these little spikes with the yellow on top? Is your resolution good enough yeah. for that? Those yeah. spikes are my claps. When I clapped my hands, so if I want to simultaneously look at the view from the from the GoPro and the view from the tripod, I just move it up over here. And then I line up the spikes. Now, Will's over on the right here, it shows the uh, resolution. And you can keep increasing it until you get down to the to the half second and so forth. But what's happening with the here's the here's the pair of spikes on the two different cameras. And what I can do is roll this together so that the spikes are lined up. Now, if I want to see how well they're lined up, I can go to the maximum uh, resolution of the editor. And we can see I didn't quite get it right when I'm at very high resolution. So I just move it over there. So now you can see this is lined up. And, and what I'm going to do now is I've got the upper clip selected. I'm going to do what's called picture in a picture, which is going to put that view inside box in the movie like that and now what we have is i'll go back to here Now, with any luck, you see the train pulling away? Let me go to full screen. So we have the train pulling away from both different views. So we're and you can also movement. see my camera on the right hand side moving to follow that. So we have a third clip that we could also insert showing the view from that angle. Or I'm not seeing any movement. Okay, we got the idea. It's going to you be got the idea. Let's go on to the next point here. It's going to be different with each video editor. Yeah, let's say that we wanted to. Uh... <clears throat> oh, yeah. To publish that clip. So if, if we break it right there, you see how I just broke that clip? Let's say this is all we want. Yes. Now, if we copy that clip and start another project, we create a new project, and we can take that clip that we just copied and put it into another movie. And I think you get the idea. You basically can play with all these components. I just I just wanted to show you that you can also move the audio around. Okay, essentially you're going to want to clip off the tail end of each one of those segments, the pieces that you don't want. Yeah, each piece you don't want, you basically cut it out. And then stitch it on to the next one to build a sequence. All right, so now we've got a new clip. We're going to say edit, paste. And we've got our little clip that we just took out of the other movie. And if we want to record over that, we press on our little microphone button. And you can see the sound level coming from my microphone here. Countdown. Hello, this is a demonstration of the new Scale Trains SD45s in motion. Now, it just recorded my voice in a new clip. 
a little on the loud side. Now let's see if we can hear it. Hello, this is a demonstration of the new Scale Trains SD45s in motion. Let's say we don't like that pause. We go in here, and this is my voice on this video clip. We cut that out right there. And notice we're just working with the audio here. We're not affecting the picture at all. I move this over here. And now there won't be a pause at the end of that little clip. SD45's in motion. See the SD45 in motion. I've removed my little pause. And if you watch the videos on the 4D PNR site, some of the presentations that took an hour are only recorded to 45 minutes because I went through and removed a whole bunch of dead airtime in the presentations of the clinicians um, just to make the video an easier thing to watch. So having done that, and oh, I, I also wanted to show you if there was something we didn't like in this video here, because along the bottom here we have video, there's an option to detach the audio and what that does is it moves the engine sound down here that I can play with it. So what happens is sometimes my wife will come down to the basement in the middle of a video shoot, and then I can go back in later and just select that point and suppress the sound so I don't hear the, the unwanted piece that's in there. You can even copy engine sounds and move it where you, to other places. But anyway, you get the idea, right? This is just cutting and pasting with video and audio and that's how easy and fun it is to edit video. Now, we, we've done uh, this little thing now, so it's a perfectly good project. We'll call it test. And we will let it save. All we have left to do is try uploading it to, video, to uh, YouTube. So here's our little test clip. See in the upper right corner, it says, there's a share symbol. It says share to YouTube and Facebook. It asks me how high I want the resolution. Nine megabytes doesn't seem like it would be that big a deal. It's 36 seconds. So these are the steps for uploading to YouTube. The key thing is that it needs to be the right kind of video file, which sometimes involves converting, but not normally. And some sort of a YouTube account and it's very easy to set up a YouTube account if you have an email address. You just you know go into YouTube and set up the account. It's free, and it allows you to manage any uploaded videos. So then you then you then you click the upload button and sec. And I'll I'll demonstrate that in a second. And eventually you publish it and review it and publicize it, and it becomes a successful video. Let's try it. We want to go to Chrome and we want to open YouTube. When you go into YouTube, they want you to watch a bunch of crazy videos, but what you want to do is you want to go right to your YouTube studio and it will open that for you and it will let you pick the file that you want to upload and then it simply uploads that file to YouTube and then lets you add some data to help people find it. There we go. See there it says create and there's an upload arrow that says upload videos. So we just click on that and we select a file or we can drag the file there. In this case, I go to the desktop. So remember we just did test. So now it's uploading this file. How about that? It's already completed that upload. This is test at 480p. This is the Eastside Clinic. And we go next and we go next and it does some checks and it says do you want to save or publish in this case i'm going to go right ahead and make this public now you see here there's a video link now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this in the chat and we'll see how it looks on youtube there it is Hello, this is a demonstration of the new Scale Trains SD45s in motion.
There you go. Very cool, Burr. Very cool. So I just have a few lingering issues to discuss and we'll be done. It's not the easiest thing to manage autofocus on a cell phone. If you've ever tried taking video of your trains with a cell phone, it wants to focus on something in the center and your train is going by, it doesn't know which, you can push on it and it'll focus on the spot you pushed, but managing that live can be tricky. So sometimes you have to take several shots. If you watch some of my operations videos carefully, you'll see places where the engine isn't in focus and the third car in the train is in focus and you're thinking, why did he do that? And the answer is, I didn't mean to do that. I just couldn't quickly figure out how to get the camera to focus. If you're using a professional video camera, obviously you have a focus ring. You'd be able to manage exactly the focus you want. Um, and of course, we didn't even have time to think about discussing uh, composition in photography. And that's, you know, what's the layout, the angle, which is what's in the shot, what's in the upper corner, the lower corner the rule of thirds, all these things are, are photography subjects. Normally, the DCC sound of my locomotives is quiet so that my train room doesn't get too loud. But when you're shooting a video, it's nice to have it elevated. So for a serious video project, you might want to adjust the sound volume in your locomotive so you get better audio quality in the recording. And of course, the octopus phenomenon of it's very hard to do all this with one brain and one set of hands. Copyright issues are something, if you want to put a picture from a magazine into your video, then you have these issues of, well, wait a minute, do I have the permission of Kambach Publishing Company or whoever it is to use this photo? And that can be a nuisance. You'll notice I don't have a lot of prototype photos in my video because of this. I don't really want to get in trouble. But I wasn't taking photographs in 1973, so my options are limited there. And of course, the other thing I want to be really clear with all of you about is the 4D PNR has a YouTube channel and we are putting up all kinds of videos of layout tours and clinics like this. We're putting up on the channel, but you can also have your own YouTube channel and you can put up anything you want. And I, I want to recommend that to you because when I'm down at Car Creek Park, I live near Car Creek Park in Seattle. I'll see a train go by, whip out my camera, take a picture of it, and then I post it to YouTube and I get 50 people liking it, you know, because they weren't there to see that train. And, you know, there are a number of us train nuts out there. This question is always, do I post it on 4D or do I do my own channel? I would just say do both. Um, and of course, the other thing we didn't get into, we just scratched the surface of all the different ways you can record more than one image, merge them together in another image and so forth. It's just part of the fun and complexity of video shooting, but it's not really necessary. So in conclusion, take videos, combine them into stories, share them with the world. That's my message today. Have at it. If you want examples, you can look at my channel and you can look at the 4D PNR movies channel that are in the link there. Thank you. Thank you, Bird. That was very informative. It was a very good clinic.